Hi, welcome to my machine shop. This video is about the uh, article I wrote for Home Shop Machinist describing a, uh, a brake, an electronic brake that I built for my jet lathe. And I'll show you why I like it. First, I'll start by showing you my lathe without the brake. And uh, I'm running it at the lowest spindle speed because that's where I uh, would normally turn uh, do, th do threading. And you'll see when I uh, turn it off, turn on the lathe and then turn it off, it takes quite a while for it to come to rest. And that's what I wanted to uh, get around. So you'll see here is the little control box that I describe in the article. I'll turn the lathe brake on. And then I'll run um, the spindle again, and you'll see how quickly it stops. It comes to a stop in probably less than, certainly less than one turn. If I go to a higher speed, it still does it. This is without. And this is with the brake. Very handy. It really speeds up my, my uh, workflow. I can make a cut and then uh, make a measurement quickly, then adjust and make another cut. Now I'm going to show you a little bit about the layout as I've described it in the article. Uh, the control box that you saw a bit ago, it's uh, built inside of an aluminum channel and uh, the left light tells you whether it's on or not and it has power to it and the right light lights up when it's breaking and when it's uh, not breaking it's not lit up. I'll, I'll show you that. Turn the light on. Turn the uh, control box on and then we'll uh, we'll run it. And there you see the light go on and go back off everything off. This is attached to the splash pan, not by uh, cutting holes, but just with a piece of uh, cold rolled stock with a couple magnets. That way I can slap it right to that. And uh, when I first put it up here, I wasn't sure where I'd have it, but I've left it right where it's at and it works just fine. Now we'll go back around past my uh, nice little shaper. It doesn't get just a lot of use. And around to the back. On the back, we see in the, on the pedestal, the headstock pedestal, this aluminum box. We'll go into that a little bit later. That box contains all of the mechanism for uh, the brake, for timing it and so forth. It's attached to the pedestal, just sitting on a couple of brackets with some Velcro attached to uh, the back of the box and then strips on the pedestal. That way, it just snaps on, never goes any place, works just fine. The cables are all contained in this split loom material. You can buy that from Amazon, a variety of places. On the left hand side is a big old power supply that I've owned for quite a few years. It supplies around 20 volts, 20 amps, and uh, that could be replaced by car batteries as I've described. I tried that out, works just fine, and, but I have this power supply and I use it. And then inside the control box, I'll show you what we do. We've had to add one relay, which is right here in the corner, and a couple of terminal strips. I think each one of them has got four screws in it. And as I've described in the article, it also takes advantage of, of uh, Velcro. And each of these is just simply attached by uh, Velcro. That way I can take the pieces out, take the terminal strips out, do the wiring, and then put the terminal strips back in. But we'll close it back up. And then uh, in the next video, I will show you the inside of the aluminum box. Well, now I've taken the aluminum box that contains all the mechanism, brought it up, put it on top of the headstock, taken the cover off. The cover is just uh, 
made from uh, thin aluminum, bought it uh, locally at uh, probably Ace or someplace like that, and machined a couple of, uh, couple of ends. And uh, then the, the mechanism itself is built on a piece of uh, quarter inch aluminum uh, stock and uh, it just bolts on and, and put it on the tail stock or on the headstock uh, behind the headstock when I'm finished. Now let me show you what it looks like when I operate this. I'll come around and uh, we'll turn on the lathe and uh, you can see that the, the uh, brake is on or the uh, at least it's uh, energized and now I'll, uh, I'll run the lathe. And you can see the armature move. So I'll come over and run that just. Come around to the other side. And uh, you can see what it looks like over here. I don't have any way to, uh, to uh, run it, so I'll pick it up, move it around carefully, so I can run the control handle, and then we'll watch it from this side. Now, before I get any further, I should point out that this was built slowly as I learned. And uh, frankly, another way to implement this would be all through electronic control systems, uh, all the timing and so forth, all the relays could be done electronically. If you are on, into uh, electronic systems, uh, that'd be the way to do it. But that's not what I did. I started out, had some fun, thought, well, why don't I try it with this and so forth. So I'll point out a few of the things that are on the, on the, uh, in the control box. Here is a, uh, a piston that uh, was originally an actuator, but I'm using it as a damper. Uh, down on the end are a couple of uh, solenoids. Um, and like I say, I built this up gradually and you can see it's built up on a, on a step. And the reason is that one wasn't enough. I had to add a second, so I just put a little yoke in here. And so it's just the result of uh, taking, making uh, use of what I had in terms of uh, solenoids. Didn't have enough pull with, the, with one, so I did two. Here's a spring up here that uh, pulls the, the uh, armature back out. So if I activate it, it pulls in, the spring stretches, then if I let go, it slowly goes back. The timing is, uh, the rate of uh, retraction or return is determined by this little screw. Those are actually little needle valves on both ends. And that determines how long it takes before it goes from one end to the other. You'll see a micro switch here. And there's another micro switch on the other side. And those two switches uh, are part of the circuitry that was described in the article. And then I'll turn it around again. And these two relays are really just in parallel with the two, uh, the two uh, contactors that are inside the uh, control, the original control box. And they're needed for all of the logic for the AND and OR logic. Uh, here's the micro switch on this side. And you can see how it uh, activates that relay. And the fact is that it's only while the armature is between the two micro switches that the light is on. So that's what that looks like. Um, I uh, hope that helps. And uh, I wouldn't expect you to duplicate this, but the, uh, the idea of being able to use a DC voltage across the primary or across the, the uh, stator windings on a motor to slow it down. And then the, the ability to time it so that it is only on at the appropriate time, that's really the core of the article.